Good morning, and welcome to the City Planning Commission Remote Public Meeting. Let's start the special review session. All right. So welcome to the uh, New York City Planning Commission review session for special review session for Wednesday, December 1st, 2021. Uh, the time is 10.01 a.m. and a quorum is present. The first item on our agenda is a uh, general project plan review in Manhattan. Uh, here to present is Edith Suchen. Hi, good morning. Thank you, Ryan, and thank you, Chair Lermont. Uh, good morning, commissioners. Good to see you all. Um, I am Edith Suchen. I'm the director of the Manhattan office at City Planning. I am here with Stephen Johnson, who is the team leader of the Manhattan CBD's team. Uh, we are here today to give you the first of two presentations to the CPC on the state's Pennsylvania Station Area Civic and Land Use Improvement Project. We will refer to it in shorthand as the Penn General Project Plan or the Penn GPP. Now the goal of the Penn GPP is to revitalize the area around Penn Station to develop an integrated public transportation complex and to establish an improved and expanded world-class transportation hub. The Penn GPP is led by the New York State Urban Development Corporation doing business as the Empire State Development, or the ESD. Today's presentation will provide background and a summary of the ESD's proposal. The ESD is holding a public hearing on the GPP next week on December 8th. After that, Stephen and I, joined by Manhattan Office Urban Designers, Joshua Simoneau and Rich Wong, will come back to you with a second presentation on the department's assessment and recommendations. Next slide, please. Thank you. So first, some basics. A general project plan enables the state to override local laws, including zoning regulations, in order to meet the goals and purpose of the proposed development. The New York State Urban Development Corporation Act provides that a local planning board or commission, so that's you, may recommend approval, disapproval, or modification of a general project plan whenever override of local regulations are being sought. Some of the zoning provisions that the state seeks to override include daylight evaluation, heightened setbacks, tower regulations, signage, pedestrian circulation space, retail continuity. We will provide a full list of the zoning sections to you before the next meeting. Uh, here, um, in this case, the ESD is also establishing design guidelines to follow, to go with the GPP. And these design guidelines will apply to the identified project sites in lieu of zoning, and they must be followed by any developers in the project. Next slide, please. Okay. Uh, so the purpose of the Penn GPP is outlined in this slide. Uh, there's, of course, widespread acknowledgement that the current Penn Station and its vicinity is not the world-class transportation hub befitting New York City. This project is a comprehensive redevelopment initiative uh, set by the state to create a revitalized area around Penn Station. The ESD has articulated these goals. Uh, to improve the area surrounding Penn Station with new, sustainable, high-density mixed-use development, to improve passenger rail and transit facilities and pedestrian circulation and access and safety throughout the district, and to support improvements to address substandard conditions in Penn Station. Also, uh, the uh, goal is to support and accommodate potential future capacity increases at Penn Station. It's important to note that while the GPP supports the reconstruction of Penn Station and potential southward expansion of Penn Station uh, to increase uh, rail capacity, those projects are being accomplished through an independent but related Penn Station master plan. And that is being undertaken by the MTA, Amtrak, and New Jersey Transit. And property acquisition for potential southward expansion would entail negotiated purchase and or eminent domain by an entity with condemnation power. So that is separate from this GPP. Back to the GPP, uh, the, this project um, uh, would result in the development of 10 new buildings around Penn Station, comprising 18.2 to 19.6 million gross square feet, primarily in new office space. The buildings would incorporate new on-site entrances and connections to the transit and public network, pedestrian network. Development facilitated by the project is expected to generate revenue streams to support the reconstruction of Penn Station and its potential southward expansion, along with other public realm and transit improvements. The, gener the revenues generated by the project will be structured around a value capture framework, and it is expected to include pilot, 
or payment in lieu of taxes. Also could include other financial mechanisms. The structure of any pilot would be determined in agreement with the city. It's really important for us to note here that the city has had preliminary conversations with the state on the financing and pilot, but it's unlikely that the pilot agreement will be done by the end of the year. So that said, we here in the city stress that while the city administration understands the state's desire to proceed with this project, there is currently not a resolution on this matter. Um, so the state and the city, we do uh, uh, remind that the GPP doesn't go in, does not go into effect until there is a financial agreement. Next slide, please. So let's talk a little bit about timeline. Um, as you surely know, the project was originally announced by the previous governor in January of 2020, and it then had an extremely expedited timeline. The first notice of scoping went out in June of 2020 for scoping in July of 2020. A draft GPP was issued in February of 2021. The ESD's goal had been to issue a final EIS in the summer of 2021. However, in the spring of 2021, in March, there was strong pushback from community stakeholders, including elected officials, local community boards, and various civic groups. They all requested more time to better understand issues and needs of transit infrastructure and development and to deliberate on and reshape some components of the project. And they uh, requested a much more expansive and thorough stakeholder engagement process. Uh, in response, the ESD adjusted the GPP timeline and established an expanded engagement process that <laughs> created a community advisory council working group um, it goes by the acronym, I guess, CACWAG. <laughs> uh, the process uh, has helped to create a broader dialogue with the community. It has encouraged discussion on different elements of the project. So the ESD, uh, CAC, WG, CACWAG process uh, subsequently led the ESD to create a revised proposal for the PENGPP, and that was issued last month in early November under new gubernatorial leadership. So both the original February 2021 draft GPP and the revised draft GPP issued last month would be presented and heard at the ESD's public hearing next week on December 8th. So following the ESD's pu uh, public hearing, there is a 30-day public comment period, and during that time, uh, the, city, the CPC will send comments. Thank you. Next slide, please. So a little bit more on the Community Advisory Committee Working Group. Um, it consists of a variety of community board representatives, local elected officials, and transportation and development groups. Um, there are more than 40 members. MTA, Amtrak, New Jersey Transit um, are um, advising partners, as is uh, Vornado, a property owner with notably large holdings in the GPP area. Um, representatives of the city were included as observing or listening members, and they included reps from Department of City Planning, from Department of Transportation, and from the Deputy Mayor's Office of Economic Development and Housing. Next slide, please. So this gives you a sense of the um, process, the Community Advisory Committee Working Group process. Uh, they met from April to November, and there was a breadth of topics covered in these multi-hour meetings, uh, 12 working meetings, and the 12th meeting was a presentation uh, by the ESD on its proposed modification to the February plan. So I now turn to Stephen, who will walk you through the GPP, both the original and the modified version. And of course, we are here to answer questions you may have at the end of the presentation. Thank you. Take it away, Stephen. Thanks, Edith. Uh, I wanted to start by mentioning that the majority of these slides uh, were created by ESD, not by city planning, to set that up at the beginning. So, uh, next slide, please. So, uh, this slide just gives you context of the project area in Midtown with Hudson Yards to the west and the Garment Center to the north, and uh, Chelsea is to the south. Next slide, please. So we have the existing zoning here. You can see it's high density commercial C6, uh, which is appropriate for this big rail station in the uh, United States. 
Uh, you can also see it's situated between two older manufacturing districts to north and south. And also, it's just south, which is RIP district. And uh, just, just under that is an R8 district for the Penn uh, South Housing Development. Next slide, please. So the land use in the area is predominantly commercial and office uses. You can see Moynihan Train Hall, light blue on the left of the project area, and MSG is in a, a fuchsia color in the center of the project. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so there are eight proposed development sites in the GPP, and they're all uh, surrounding Penn Station there. So while Moynihan Train Hall, probably office building, Pen 1 and Pen 2 are inside the GPP area, there is no commercial development that is proposed on those sites related to the GPP. So uh, just walking through the eight sites, starting at the bottom of the map, sites one, two, three, these three sites are, represent the proposed location for the expanded station train station, which would be a new below grade track with uh, platforms, new platforms, below grade access points, and a new train hall on top of that. Uh, the bulk of this would be located on site two, which is block 780. It takes up the entire city block there, along with parts of site one and site three. On its side. The proposed southward expansion would increase capacity up to nine new tracks and five platforms and below grade conditions to Penn Station, LIRR, Amtrak, and of course, subway connections. Site four and five at the top, uh, these sites are controlled by Orneo and we typically refers to Penn West and Penn East and Two Penn is located in between those. And the commission may recall that Two Penn was just recently here in 2019 to make some changes to the plaza yeah, at Two Penn. And that also coincided with the renovation of Two Penn that Ornado is undertaking. Uh, site six on the right, the upper right, uh, site has about 11 different parcels and the majority of those sites are controlled by tornado and sites seven and eight uh, sites uh, includes 15 Penn on 7th avenue and the mall site so 15 Penn granted a cpc special permit over 10 years ago to redevelop the site and that special permit has subsequently lapsed site so this slide uh, highlights the ongoing development and recent projects in the project area and close to project area. Uh, so with the completion of Moynihan Train Hall and the relocation to Moynihan, uh, this provided an opportunity to overhaul the existing and station. So MTA and New Jersey Transit are currently developing a master plan to renovate the existing station and create an approved environment and experience. Uh, the Penn State Master Plan is separate from the Penn GP, but the transit and public realm improvements would be integrated uh, between the renovation of Penn State and the GP. Uh, the same entities are collaborating on both projects, uh, and I believe they're looking to approve a uh, new design of the master plan in the near future. Uh, Bornado has been undergoing their own renovations at one Penn and one two. I mentioned one pen, but two pen is also being recladded and modernized, and that includes upgrades to entrances, including entrances below grade to the transit. Uh, there is a new east end gateway that's on this map, it's called Plaza 33, and that has a new uh, major entrance into below grade LAR concourse. And uh, Manhattan West is to the west. And that's a mixed use development to Moynihan. And of course, uh, something more recent is the Highline Extension, which is proposing to link the existing Highline into the Manhattan uh, development. And just outside boundaries, as you were, uh, well, rear are recent developments at Hudson Yard, which is you know, one block over to the west. And then north is the Port Authority bus terminal, which is also in the process of an overhaul. And finally, MSG moving back. City planning in the next uh, two years to discuss uh, their special permit. Next slide. 
So as mentioned earlier, ISTE had their original proposal for the GPP uh, in February. And now we have a revised proposal after working with the uh, CAC working group. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna walk through the original uh, February proposal and then the revised version. Both versions will be part of the public hearing on December 8th. So uh, the original proposal called for a total uh, of approximately 19.6 million of surf feet to 14.4 million of class A commercial space. That included 800,000 square feet for retail and 800,000 for a hotel, and 3.7 million square feet of non program area, which includes the space in the back of house areas. So just over 10 square feet is permitted under the existing zoning. We'll be increasing the square footage by just under 10,000 square feet. And you can see from these proposed uh, envelopes, nothing's here. Two of the buildings will go above up to uh, 33 FAR on Sec 35, and one building would go up to 31 FAR uh, on Site 6, and the largest building on Site 2 would have an FAR of 40, and that uh, Site 2 would include uh, the two maids. Train hall, the new train station, and the mid block open space. And together, they have a blended FAR of 33. Next slide, please. So, one of the main revisions that uh, came out of the CAC working group uh, was directly related from feedback from the working group uh, with questions about how large the commercial office buildings were as proposed. So, ESC in this revised version has proposed to limit the FARs to 30 for the building. So you can see on site which is lot 780, where the train uh, station will be. It's one FAR of 28, and the two buildings are at 26 to 30, and the, the four FAR building is now 26. So you have site three, five, six, which went from 33 FAR to 30, and this is overall a reduction of approximately 7% or 1.37 uh, million per feet. Next slide, please. So one of the uh, components uh, that one of the that came out of the work group was the quest for more uh, permanent affordable housing. So ESC demanded some uh, residential alternative for GDP, and this slide uh, is representing that. Uh, so you can see a residential is master around a uh, site one, which is uh, on the bottom left in the pink, uh, site four, which is uh, and west, and then not in all sites. But uh, in site one, really the affordable housing uh, makes sense in relationship to the existing land use, the context of Chelsea South uh, and the R8 and R8. Next slide, please. So one of the issues for the project uh, that has to be uh, solved is the magnitude of the development and the phase of the project. So uh, the anticipates the phase, first phase of the project will be completed in 2028 and the second phase in 2038. So uh, it's not exactly clear at the moment how the phases are linked to the low grade, above grade uh, improvements. Uh, for the GPH something that needs to develop and have a time schedule for the phases. Next slide, please. So during the process, uh, one of the main issues that was brought up uh, was the, well, one of the concerns for the department that we've, we've mentioned along that the proposed transit and public realm improvements really have to be commensurate with the anticipated development and the impacts of that development. So uh, with that in mind, what we're seeing here is the proposed low-grade uh, transportation improvements for GPP. So uh, if you look at the commutation patterns coming out of Penn Station, uh, you see that 70% of users are traveling after leaving Penn Station, traveling north and east, uh, moving into the central district, and 30% moving west. So uh, it makes sense to facilitate these commuter movements to the north and east. And I think this 
proposal for the low grade concourse uh, anticipates that. So the next three SD maps, including this one, kind of show these two concourses. Um, so we have the PPP February on the left, the proposal uh, on the right, and the uh, medium blue is the proposed access points down below grade. The light blue are the existing uh, infrastructure. So we have the 8th Avenue AC line on the left, 7th Avenue 123 line in the middle, and the 6th Avenue BDFB and BMD and BRW on the right. So the goal is the expansion proposed below grade compass. Um, so one of the issues for this proposal is crossing 7th Avenue because of all the existing infrastructure that's already there in the subway line. Uh, so the idea is to cross over to 7th Avenue and then move up uh, the east side of 7th Avenue, something that we're referring to as Eastern Corridor, and this would then facilitate uh, a large amount of pedestrian movements below to the north and east. Uh, one thing I want to point out is the call box, black call box on the right, and proposed alternative. This is a 33rd Street, Street option. And that represents the old mobile park store passenger bay, uh, which was closed in the 80s due to its substandard conditions and design. So the idea here is to make uh, an important east west link uh, from Station to Herald Square and Green Square. And so we connect Minahan, Penn Station, uh, all the subway lines that I had already mentioned, and Path Station, and of course the Marion Station. Uh, it should be noted that if the Gibbles passageway is chosen as the preferred east west route into Harold and Greeley Square, it has to be completely overhauled uh, and redesigned, and not just to have a, a you know, clean up to give a new lighting. You have to have be extended and made to a, a really nice, gracious pathway. Uh, next slide, please. So this slide proposes one of the options for uh, using the a different passageway to the east and to the west. Uh, this would be through the 1510 Manhattan Mall site. This would be uh, a proposal would have a completely new passageway below grade that would be on new development sites for seven and eight. And I think this opportunity for that is, is a good one because it's, it's plans to new development that would be going on that. Uh, next slide, please. So ESD is proposing a minimum requirement of open space associated with the development sites. This is including the sidewalk bodies and county transit access through this at 150% to achieve these numbers for the lot size. Site two is at 44% because they are including the train hall and the proposed open space between the two buildings. Uh, one of the important upgrade improvements that I want to mention here is a poll for Jared Streets. These are proposed in the, uh, the east-west green areas on the mass. Uh, so this is on 32nd and 33rd Street from 67th Avenue. And this would be on both east-west corridors on site seven and eight. Uh, it also extends through 33rd Street to 9th Avenue. And ESD also recently added in the proposed alternative on the right, including 31st Street, 7th Avenue, 8th Avenue, along the north side of the proposed new train hall on site two. So the shared space would make the public right away uh, space more shared public space all users and not just for cars and trucks. And all the focus on this shared street would be how uh, could be how they are designed, they are maintained, and what uh, a variety of ways uh, can be done designed with minimal um, interventions like painting the roadway or bollards. We can do some more major upgrades, which includes things like clutch roadway from building lines to building lines to material furnishings. Plans. So that aspect of the proposal has not been worked out. Uh, these are very much in the May of the Department of Transportation, and uh, there are details to work out with doing that. And perhaps the main issue related to that is the loading 
an unloaded trucks. Uh, so you, as you can see from these uh, poles here, and on the right, this is it, SG truck access uh, is on both sides of Shear Street. Uh, so that an issue that needs to be worked out in truck when already MSG is an issue, is an existing issue in how they get trucks in and out of there to make both sides of the of MSG Shear Street. It's a great idea and uh, we have to do most of that. Next slide, please. These are just some renderings of the proposed streets. Uh, one on left is looking east of 33rd from 9th Avenue. And you can see SG and Japan in the background with Minahan in front. Uh, the rendering on the right, looking past 31st Street, between 7th and 8th Avenue, uh, with the new mid block open space and new trail on the left. And you can see MG on the right, also a possible. New mid block connection, which I'll discuss a little bit later in the presentation. Uh, these are two very nice uh, renderings. Uh, the trucks and deliveries are moving in and around the area, uh, and that's something needs to be worked out. Next step, please. So, one of the other things that came out of our group was this idea of a public realm passports uh, according to ESD. Uh, this is modeled after the East Midtown Governing Group. Uh, it could have, it will have uh, both the members, civic groups, and it would also create a public room. And I think what this task force is doing is addressing two issues. First, it ensures that the community and the task force members have an active role in the process continues uh, in the future. And second, it addresses some concerns about the big issues that I mentioned earlier. So that certain public members don't have to wait until 2038 uh, to sooner rather than later. Like, uh, so these are some proposed masks on lobby widths for developments uh, related to the action fringes. Uh, this is a difficult subject because uh, ESD needs the flexibility to design the transit, the transit infrastructure, entrances, escalators. Steps, all those important aspects of the train station. Uh, before we even have a provision for new train hall or a draft design of the train hall. Uh, so, what we're proposing here is uh, flexible and they propose maximum lobby uh, of 90 of 100 feet in the original and then 90 feet in the proposed alternative. Next slide, please. So, this is just an example of. Possible lobby frontage between uh, site one and two on Eighth Avenue uh, and shows the different uses and frontages of those buildings. Next slide, please. So, he has also proposed base heights for the developments for the eight sites and uh, they made a revision down to 150 feet uh, in the proposed alternative for 200. And this is related to the mid block open space that you can see on the right uh, between the two new buildings, proposed new buildings on. Uh, the idea is that the mid block open space should have more light in the air come down into that area. Next slide, please. Uh, so we're looking southwest site two. This is the proposed new train station site in the Two Penn Plaza has the existing, obviously, uh, station track on it. Um, so one of the design aspects of the Penn GPP and working group and focusing on the importance of a design and specific gesture for the area and uh, possibly this avenue on front of Joseph Avenue. So they're taking their views from the Penn station, which everyone acknowledges that uh, Something needs to be done here to take significant gateways, train entrance, a step down and get a corridor, uh, because this is a one in a lifetime opportunity to have a new train station. So uh, something has to be done to make the civic design gestures ensure that this is not turned into a train station, uh, car two, or a commercial office building in that. 
So we're really in the July 2020 version. The proposed system to have a contract to do transition is a multiple office building with normal building slope retreats. And uh, that would be on the corner of the, on 31st Street. Uh, ASTN proposed what's on the draft sheet on the left version. There's a side core entrance, kind of a, a side corner that's not to 31st Street, 3rd Street. Uh, the proposed alternative on the right shows something more significant uh, entrance on 7th Avenue uh, with the building pushed back 50 feet and opening up an opportunity to get more signature statement of the station as located. It's also aligns with the commuter movements with their traffic the, and they're traveling north and east at this location. And it also aligns more with the existing uh, two Building which is pushed back 60 feet from their line. Next slide, please. So, part of the Penn State master plan development is completely separate from the Penn DEP. One of the scenarios that uh, MBA and Amtrak are looking at is a mid block train hall between MSC and UN, which you can see here on this slide. It's a space between SG and two men, and you see the people walking in and out of the train. You can see also the new East and Gateway on the left project area. There. This is at 33rd Street and 7th Avenue, and you can see the new but, uh, rehab work that's going on at two pen. Did you use your thoughts? We're shooting me on your shoes. Okay, can you guys hear us now? That's yeah. much yes. better. Yep. Yes. Okay, better. thank you. Go ahead. Yes. Thank you. Okay, great. Thanks. You should start um, over. Completely. <laughs> All right, I'll start at the very beginning and uh, I'll get lunch too. <laughs> okay, thank you. So uh, the idea here that MTA is proposing is this new train hall by MSG and two pen will align with the proposed new train hall on site two, which is the new train station. Um, this rendering also shows that 33rd street as a massive open unstructured shared street with the single truck wedged into a loading bay for MSG. Uh, so something that I mentioned earlier that needs to be worked out for the project. Next slide, please. So one of the uh, additions from the alternative proposal is to add these in-building entrances here. So you can see the seventh, existing 7th Avenue and 34th Street and uh, the signage and the way the existing entrance is on that site and the proposal uh, for a possible new in-building entrance at that location. Next slide, please. And it's the same here at 8th Avenue and 33rd Street. The idea here is to integrate the entrance, make a nice spacious entrance, and uh, that goes along with the new development. Next slide, please. So the next three slides show renderings of the skyline with the proposed GPP and the alternatives. Uh, this will give you the context for the surrounding buildings and Midtown, but also the draft versions and the revisions. So this shows the original draft uh, of the GPP. Next slide, please. This is the proposed revision. Next slide, please. And this is the residential alternative. Next slide, please. Uh, so we just have a few slides left that I'm gonna quickly go through. So another aspect to the GPP is related to resiliency and sustainability. So they uh, want their developments to be compliant with local law 97 and have energy efficient materials. Next slide, please. Uh, they're also proposing bicycle parking in the area. They're proposing to reduce the number of parking spaces and uh, the increase in bike parking would not be minimal, it would be a, a nice sizable increase. Next slide, please. 
Uh, one of the things that came out of uh, the working group also is uh, related to the community services. This was very helpful, I thought, uh, for the working group to bring this up. So the Antonio Oliv Olivieri Center uh, would be the, provided the opportunity to return to the site uh, in order to continue their community services. And uh, one of the, this would also tap into the working with homeless services and social services in the area. Uh, some of you may be aware of that. It's an ongoing issue around Penn Station. So uh, the community uh, brought up these ideas of trying to work with homeless and uh, social services to improve the area. Next slide, please. Uh, so housing in the area, this, I touched on this with the uh, residential alternative. Um, so this is just to outline some of the possibilities for residential development, including uh, some permanently affordable housing. So if all the residential units as proposed are developed in the residential scenario, up to 1,798 residential units could be built. And if that was the case, 539 would be proposed to be permanently affordable. Next slide, please. Uh, I mentioned some of this before, the density in the newer version, the alternative version was reduced by 1.37 million gross square feet, approximately 7%, and included a 30 FAR maximum. Next slide, please. And this just is a chart showing the flow of development-related revenues uh, it not, it's not at this point clear what constitutes development-related revenues. As Edith mentioned earlier in the presentation, the funding mechanisms are not clear yet as we are uh, just in the preliminary stages of discussions related to uh, funding for the GPP. Next slide, please. So the next steps, uh, ESD is having their public hearing on December 8th which starts a 30-day comment period that will end on January 10th. Uh, we will be coming back to you in mid-December to explain and discuss some of the uh, recommendations that we have for the GPP, and uh, that wraps up the presentation, and we'll be happy to make uh, just answer any questions for you. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Edith and Stephen, for that presentation. Um, and I'm happy to open this up to questions from the commission. I have a couple questions myself. Um, I know we're going to consider our recommendation later. And one of the things that I would really be interested in understanding better is an articulation of why this, pro this project, this GPP, is preceding the GPP for the Penn Station redevelopment itself, because I see them as so related. And, you know, there's a lot of commercial density being provided here, ostensibly, at least in part, to fund the cost of the station improvements. And, you know, not understanding the scope of that, that work makes it hard to really assess whether or not this is appropriate in that regard. So I would I would like to get a better understanding of that. In addition, you know, in terms of the public uh, realm improvements, both the below grade improvements and the ones uh, above grade, I, I'm very unclear via the GPP about the phasing of those, the certainty of those, or how they will come online. You know, we were very careful in Greater East Midtown to ensure that the development of new office buildings would absolutely result in the development of uh, a lot of public realm improvements. And so here, I don't quite see that. And if there's anything more that could be shared about that, that would be very helpful. Okay. So any questions from the commission? Okay. Commissioner Levin has a question. Yes. Commissioner Levin. Uh, well, uh, yes, I want to thank you, Anita, for laying out the, the two topics that are top of my mind, um, which is uh, why we're not moving, why we're doing, why we're moving ahead now, and um, 
uh, how we're gonna be sure that the public realm improvements happen. So I'm really glad you laid those out, issues out. Um, when we respond to this, I'm also curious to know how this amount of density fits into commercial density in other um, areas of the city, particularly East Midtown, where we are, you know, are determined to see redevelopment of commercial office space. And we're also in a pandemic mode where you know, the need for office space is being reconsidered. So what do we know about uh, what work has been done to study the market to understand that this um, now, what, 18.3 million square feet is an appropriate amount? To me at this point, this feels like um, a real estate development deal that is unattached to a public um, project and we need to put the public project first. Um, Commissioner, um, Vice Chair Nuggles. And thank you for the presentation. Um, well, my question I, I, I think um, uh, dovetails with uh, the prior question. Um, about the determination as to whether this would be a predominantly commercial uh, development versus a residential development. Uh, what's the timing around that formulation and uh, what criteria is gonna be used to, to ultimately make that determination? Uh, that's the first question. And the second question, I'm just wondering, uh, are there ongoing negotiations as we speak with these uh, private landowners? I know Vornado, of course, has been engaged in this for a while, but the, the non-Vornado uh, property owners, uh, uh, is there an active discussion going on or, or does that, uh, is that pending, you know, the, uh, the uh, GPP? Uh, designation. Thank you. Those are very good questions. Commissioner Bernie. Oh, thank you. Yes. And um, yeah, and thanks for the presentation. And I had pretty much the same questions, really. And I think, you know, um, when you think about Penn Station, you know, the problems really start way down at the track level, where you have really unsafe conditions, uh, poor circulation, um, and I don't see them being resolved by the plans that I've seen. And, and, you know, why we keep on renewing the special permit for the Dolans I, is beyond my understanding. But that's part of the issue, that we need to get that out of there so that we can relieve some of the pressure on the below grade. And then to add uh, 10 buildings with all of these nice new entrances obviously only exacerbates the problems that are going on below grade. So I just... Um, definitely agree that the timing is not appropriate here. We need to solve what's going on below before we can add more people into the fray uh, of getting into the um, transit system below. Just to uh, touch on one of those items that you brought up. So the Penn Station master plan is separate from the GPP. So uh, MTA and Amtrak and all the entities working on that are trying to solve and rehab that area that's separate from the GPP. So when so the the maze and conditions of the existing Penn Station uh, is a different issue, um, but the improvements that are coming from that project and the improvements from the GPP would be integrated together. So so that that was the question really that the chair had. Well, you know, what is the timing? Are they on a separate track? When do they converge? Can, can we be assured that the below grade improvements will happen before the tsunami of new office workers comes pouring in? You know? Thank you. Uh, these, are, these are all excellent questions. And um, the question about uh, Penn Station renovation, potential expansion, and how it fits, you know, how it relates to the GPP, that was a major uh, question uh, last year and, and, and the lead factor in why the uh, GPP timetable was extended. Um, your, many of the questions here, uh, they may be addressed by the state at their uh, hearing presentation next week, um, but certainly uh, we will be sure to pose these directly to them in um, through other channels. Um, I do wanna just say uh, as, as a general point from a planner's perspective, 
that, uh, yes, this is a lot of density. And uh, without making a statement about the exact specific number here, you know, this is the busiest transit hub in not just, you know, the city, but also in the nation. And this is a job center and should be, um, we, we do support high density development here. But of course, our support and advocacy of high density in any CBD always comes paired with a um, insistence on quality public realm and transit improvements. And one where we um, understand a schedule and, you know, details and, you know, the, 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 the constructability and the responsibility for them. So, um, again, yes, we do believe this is an appropriate place for high density development and commercial development at that, um, primarily commercial development at, at a transit hub. Um, uh, but we also, uh, you know, always insist that it must come coupled with a, a suite of quality improvements to the public realm and transit. Uh, thank, you. thank you for that, Edith. But I would I would still echo um, Commissioner Levin's concern that even while we support commercial development as a general proposition, we cannot ignore one the fact that we are cultivating commercial development in a nearby CBD. And have there been any thoughts at all given to how this would compete? And secondly, where we are in terms of the post-COVID era and office use, has any thought been given to how that impacts this? These are really questions for ESD. Um, Commissioner Ortiz. I, I, I guess to join the chorus, I would um, you know, agree with, with those concerns. And really, um, you know, how are we and how might we incorporate flexibility in uses that enable us to um, perhaps pivot um, as necessary, um, you know, and as reflective of market conditions between something like residential and office. Mm -hmm. um, so, so I will add that. So two new things perhaps I can add to this discussion. One, yeah, I'm, I'm wondering, you mentioned there's a public realm fund um, or that the, that the plan would be to create a public realm fund. Um, you know, what, and what kind of stewardship plan have they thought about for the public realm or shared streets? Is it, you know, business improvement district? Is it, you know, an extension of Vornado? Um, uh, you know, cause there is some talk about shared streets and I think how we manage those streets and who manages them is important. Um, so that's one thing. The other is, um, you know, mobility um, within the site for alternative modes of transit um, and, and within a network that sees this as, you know, a, a hub um, for, th for not just bikes, but e-mobility, um, which we've seen, you know, huge increase in e-mobility um, following the pandemic. And, you know, I, I think we're only going to see more of that. And I, I think the ability to connect this site more easily with some, even some of these other areas, Hudson Yards, East Midtown, um, you know, this will continue to be the hub where millions of people arrive every day and go to those other places as well. Um, and I do think we need to think about how we're supporting improved and alternative modes of transit uh, and making those options safe for people. Um, you know, the e-scooter rentals or, you know, they have to go on city streets, right? And those streets need to be safe. And the more we encourage those that kind of connectivity, I think the more we can um, create a, a foundation for success in some of these other districts as well. Thank you. Are there any other questions from the commission? So I any more, and I wanna thank you guys for this very, very thorough presentation. And we will see you again in two weeks. Thank you. Thank you. The second item on our uh, review session agenda is a city council modification scope determination for the stair at Lehigh and terminal warehouse. Uh, Sylvia, I believe you're presenting this. Yes. Um, good morning, commissioners. I'll just note that um, you may recall the applications for zoning text and map amendments to facilitate 
adaptive reuse of the Star at Lehigh and Terminal Warehouse buildings were approved by the City Planning Commission um, uh, on November 3rd, 2021. Um, and on November 22nd, the City Council voted on the applications and has proposed draft modifications to the zoning text amendment only. Specifically, uh, next slide. Specifically, the modification would reduce the allowance for use group 10A large retail uses from 15% of total building floor area to 10%. Um, the department has reviewed the proposed change and determined that it raises no land use or environmental issues requiring further review. Um, thank you, happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Are there any questions from the commission? Okay, seeing none, uh, we're asked to send a scope determination letter to the city council. Uh, all of those in favor, say yay. 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 Any opposed, say nay. Okay, so we will send the letter to the city, uh, city council. Thank you. Um, and the third item on our agenda for this review session is a city council modification scope determination for the citywide hotel tax amendment. Alex? Uh, hi, uh, thank you. This is for the city council modification. Um, next slide, please. Uh, so at the top of the slide, we see the current investing uh, provisions that were approved by the CBC. Uh, and below, we see the proposed additional vesting modifications. Uh, this would be in addition to what was already approved, uh, and that would be for applications filed after the date of adoption in the fear sub-district of the special midtown district. Uh, this would apply to lots with an area of 20,000 square feet or more at the date of adoption, 10,000 square feet of which are clear buildings, or buildings that are at least 90% vacant. These applications will have two years to get the Department of Building approval for a foundation permit and must have a certificate of occupancy within 10 years of the date of adoption. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, there's only one potential site that uh, we are currently aware of, uh, and it's between 45th Street and 46th Street on the east side of 8th Avenue. Okay. And that is all I have for you today. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, I'm here to answer. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. Um, are there any questions from the commission about this modification? Uh, Madam Chair, just one question. Is, is, uh, you're saying they're in scope, within scope? Yes. Yeah. We have conditions in scope. Um, so we're asked to send a scope determination letter to the city council that the a modification is within scope. And uh, all of the commissioners who are in favor, please say yay. 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 Yeah. Any nays? Say nay. Okay, thank you. We will send this letter to the city council. Thank you. And that concludes the special review session for Wednesday, December 1st. We can move on to the uh, public meeting.